Today we want to show you a very limited Martin guitar. This is part of the Modern Deluxe series. It's 0018 that technically has not gone into production, but is a very cool guitar. Stay tuned for more details. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our Spring Store link below for custom swag and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. The way you said that at the very end, almost like had a little Kermit the Frog thing going on with it. <coughs> yeah, how's it going? We should just, we should just like... Do a review as Kermit the Frog here. This is a nice, lovely Martin 0018. Um, so impressions, <laughs> impressions game. Oh, you should hear my Mickey Mouse. So, um, so 0018 Modern Deluxe that did not go into production. Yeah, I'm not. So we were just talking about it. I don't really know the story on this one. We get a call said, "Do you want something interesting?" It's not available. It's we not going to yes. be available. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we've. I mean, last year we did a lot of cool prototypes. And this isn't technically a prototype, but I don't know what else to call it to a certain extent. I would say you know, it, it probably would classify as a prototype. It is not stamped, uh, not stamped with the prototype, but knowing that they did not choose to put it in production, I'm sure they made a handful of these. And um, I mean, it's it's cool. We have seen the 0028 Modern Deluxe. We've seen standard 0018s. And this just combines them into a cool package that I, I mean, I'm surprised that they wouldn't just make it. I mean, it's, it's cool guitar. But. Well, you know, sometimes those things are about what ends up taking priority and precedent over it. So, yeah. you know, if you're looking through the standard lineup of Martin guitars and you're looking at models to do the modern deluxe treatment to, mm -hmm. it's effectively what it is. It's, it's taking one of these standard series and saying, we're going to do a modern deluxe version. Yeah. Uh, you're going to work through what you think would be uh, popular and compelling versions, right? So yeah. someone could make the case like, hey, where's the M36 Modern Deluxe or you know something like that? Where's the HD35? Where's the HD35 Modern Deluxe? All good points. They, so, can, all, they can all show up. They could, and they, yeah. you know, depending upon popularity and demand, that's usually how these things get yeah. those treatments. So without knowing the full history, my speculation, which is all it is, would be that um, this was one of those that was further along in the process, and maybe some got made. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> particularly coming out of the pandemic that we just went through and the strain that that put on production, there were decisions that had to be made to prioritize some stuff. Because if you've already done an introduction and you already have a popular guitar and you have to have those built versus doing an introduction of a guitar that's a wonderful guitar but less well-known compared yeah. to like a triple O twenty eight. Yeah. You're gonna prioritize and do the stuff that you have to meet demand for first. Absolutely. So that's probably what happened to this. So first off, let's talk about what makes the modern deluxe modern deluxe. God, nice top. Really nice Sika Spruce uh VTS top. So if you see the the up close photos of this guitar, the top has these kind of these rays going across. It almost looks like flame. That's called uh, silking. It's, uh, people also call it uh, medullary lines or rays. And it's basically like, you can see a really high quality top because it's this kind of crosshatch growth that the tree goes through. So if you ever see like really straight grain with like these really nice medullary lines, it's a nice top. Um, yeah. So that's like, that's, as things go, probably one of the top, top tops <laughs> that it's Martin had. Total top top. So second thing, if you look closely, is that maple in the... Yes. Rosette. And also, this is rosewood mm -hmm. binding, yep. which it's just cool. It's, which I really like with mahogany. It's yeah. an understated, elegant touch because they're complementary but contrasting enough. Like, you could put maple on this, and I don't think it would pop like it does with rosewood. Yeah. Because mahogany is kind of this medium, you know, colored grain without a lot of figuring, and the rosewood just, it's elegant. Yeah, it's, an, it's really like, pretty. Yeah. Very nice. Um, and the neck. The neck, I mean, I don't know how well it's coming across on the camera, but it's that is highly flamed. Highly flamed all the way up the headstock. Gold open gear Waverly's on there. Um, the nice, you know, abalone script logo, which we enjoy. Um, liquid metal bridge mm -hmm. pins, which go with all those modern deluxe. This one is needs to, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's the formula of a great guitar. Just the couple of things kicked up on it, you know? Yeah, well, and one of the things that, so talking about the bridge, these liquid metal 
bridge pins mount the ball end of the string up against a carbon fiber bridge plate. And that is really important for a number of reasons and speaks to kind of what's going on with this, um, like the gold frets. Like there's a choice of the materials that are utilized in this to make it more upscale, to make it lighter, to make it more resonant, to make it feel better, play better, things like that. Like the mm -hmm. gold fret wires, kind of a really cool aesthetic choice and a really cool feel. Um, and it, it changes the, the tone slightly um, when you're fretting a string because anything that comes in contact with the mm -hmm. strings is God, is most important um, when it comes to tone. And so the minute you're fretting a string, whatever that fret wire is is going to be imparting some of that that tone. But the carbon fiber bridge plate, I think is, is shouldn't be glossed over. Yeah. Because the bridge plate is to do a primary function and that is to strengthen the top against the ball end of the strings and against the bridge that's pulling on it. It creates a structure, uh, uh, you know, so you have this primary point of strength to prevent the bridge literally from ripping off the guitar, but also to help uh, transmit the vibrations of the strings through the top because the anchor of the strings to the bridge and the breakover angle on the saddle going down is what helps take that vibration that you've introduced into the string and put it through the rest of the guitar, first through the top and then through the body. And a lot of people fail to understand how important that whole relationship is. That's why you want a tall saddle on your guitar. So, you know, a lot of people when they're adjusting action, they'll just set, sand the saddle down. And what you don't realize when you're doing that is that you are taking away from that vibration that's being transferred through the top. Yeah. So that's the primary reason for a bridge plate is strength and rigidity right there to anchor the bridge and anchor the strings down. Now, if you've ever looked at a vintage guitar, you might see that those bridge plates can get damaged over time. From the constant restringing of the guitar, um, those ball ends will dig into it. And if it fails, what happens is it rips through. You yeah. know, you'll just see a failure where it rips through the top, rips, rips through the bridge plate, rips through the bridge. Sometimes the bridge comes off in the most catastrophic of cases. So the fact that it's carbon fiber means that that cannot happen. Yeah. Because it's an incredibly strong or robust material, but it also has another benefit. It's extremely light. And yeah. so in a, in a place where you're not going to see what's probably the least traditional yeah. building material on this guitar, it's probably giving you the most benefit. Yeah, which I think a lot of people, I mean, it's on all the modern deluxe guitars. Since you can't see it, a lot of people don't notice it. Maybe they don't know it's there. It is a really cool thing yeah. to have. It's very cool, too, if you look inside. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean... We recently did a 018. We've done the regular 0018 in the past. We've done the, you know, I think we both think that the single O and the double O are those overlooked mm -hmm. kind of things. This is just, you know, a special guitar that you probably cannot find another one of that's available. Um, sounds really good. It feels great. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, let's prove it.
So there you have it. And this, I think, proves, once again, that when it comes to acoustic guitars, you want lightness of build uh, in order to translate to, to uh, resonance of the body of the guitar. Tone woods matter extremely. The build that goes into it probably matters more in a lot of ways. And this yeah. is a good example of this. This is a lot lighter than like a normal 0018. It's crazy. Yeah. Just a few choices and it's like, oh, that's how much a spruce bridge plate weighs? Or like, what's yeah. going on here? It's crazy. It's a 10 pound bridge plate. Yeah. Um, and we also, since you noticed the shirts that we're wearing that match a different video, we played an authentic today as well. This could not be further from that guitar in a lot of different ways. The size, the modern versus yeah. vintage, but... But the fundamentals are the fundamentals same. Fundamentals are, are there. So the Quality fundamentals wood. that made wonderful pre-war Martins yeah. are in play for wonderful modern deluxe Martins. Yeah. That top does really look it's great from the really same. It's really nice top. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic guitar. All of the little... I, I'm geeking out lately. I don't know what yeah. it is, but looking at guitars, I'm just picking up on all of these lately? little... Lately? I know, but well, uh, so honestly, working in a music store, you kind of, for me anyway, I kind of vacillate through like, yeah, seen one, seen them all. You know, so it's nice to kind of get back into this, seeing these little details that matter, yeah. like the abalone side dots that are on the fretboard. Yeah. Um, so I don't know about you. I've said this before on the channel. When I'm a player, I don't play like this. I'm never paying attention to the fretboard this way. Yeah. I'm always looking at the side of the neck. I Inlay on the fretboard is cool. I don't, it never bothers me, and I don't really care. Um, you know, other than it's pretty when it's hanging on a wall or something. Yeah. But when I look down and I see these things, it's, it's like it's for the player. It's for the player. Something's for the audience and something's <clears> for the player. <throat> so I love little details like that. I love the... This is just a phenomenal guitar. We didn't talk about the Abalone logo on the headstock, which is... Yeah. Uh, I, th I think that one might be... That and the block are my two favorite Martin logos. Yeah. Because it's just cool. So wonderful little guitar. I think they should revisit the idea of putting this in production. Or if you don't want them to and you want to be the only person out there that's got one, here's your chance. And that makes this like instant collector's item. Yeah, potentially. For sure. So it's a wonderful guitar, regardless. Um, you know, small body, one of the things we should talk about is the tone. Small body, spruce and mahogany. Warmth, articulation, and just a very fast response. Yeah. You know, because it's small, you play it, you get a lot of volume with very little input. Yeah, and you heard I started off with finger picking, then moved to the pick. There was definitely an, some enough dynamic range that it wasn't like some of the really small guitars that we play that no matter what, it's going to be similar volume. This does have a lot of dynamic room to play with, but as a finger picking guitar, it's pretty much exactly what you want. And then if you need to strum, it's going to put out more, you know, it'll be a noticeable push from a pick. So it's pretty sweet. So if you were looking for a small bodied articulate, really kind of amazing Martin that's out of the norm. You want to be in the know. You want to be able to say, this has a really cool story to it and I'm fortunate to have this. You should go to our website, which is? It's alamomusic.com and it's literally the only place that you'll be able to learn more about this guitar. That's right. So hopefully the specs there will satisfy you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, feel free to contact us if you're interested in this or anything else or if you want to build your own custom little one-off sweetheart of a Martin. Uh, we can help you with that too. I always that. say at the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one you're playing. That happens when you really, I think, find a guitar that you gel with, that you uh -huh. appreciate, that is a treat. Um, this is a treat, so. Absolutely. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and keep coming back for more, and we will see you next time.